Aloha, my name is Dr. Stephanie Han, and today I'm going to talk to you a bit about how we read and why we might read and how we should not discipline ourselves when we're reading. The primary purpose of reading is really for um, an idea of entertainment. I'll be perfectly blunt. Um, we can also seek to read for information, but if you do not read for any type of fun or entertainment, you will probably stop being a reader. This may or may not be relevant to you, but as a writer, I always try to remind myself of this. So at any given time, I'm reading multiple books. This is a result of me um, finally reckoning with the fact that maybe I don't always have to be so purposeful when I read and it also is a result of me recognizing that because of the way I am with my interest in multiple areas and what I'm trying to accomplish and do that I am better off um, <clears throat> reading and dipping into different books for a different period of time and skimming some books and reading other books really carefully. Um, so for example, last week I finished reading this book. Um, it was really, it was fun. It was an easy, fast read for me. I didn't read all the sections really carefully, but I think that the purpose of the book was for me to examine story structure in a memoir and to look at a situation of a relationship that was one of abuse. <clears throat> and because of that, um, I enjoyed the read, um, didn't really look at all the details, but yeah, it was fun, Donna Kaz Unmasked. This book I'm looking at now to try to figure out how to, to address my diet when it comes to osteoporosis, okay? Um, I'll be honest, the very beginning of the book really put me off. I don't have a science background, so reading about all the different science uh, combinations made me think, oh my God, I gotta call up the dietitian. I don't think I can even plow through this. I'm a bit of a lazy reader, so if it's too hard for me, like if there's a lot of mathematical stuff and science stuff in it, and then my background in science and chemistry is weak, um, I'm not necessarily likely to get through the book in the same way. I'm also wondering because, to be honest, I love reading cookbooks, but um, I don't really use them that much. But anyway, I thought because of my osteoporosis, I need to address this, which brings me to this book. So I love the way this book look. I uh, really enjoyed this. I got inspired thinking I was going to cook from this cookbook and be a blue zone person to live to 120 and enjoy every second but that hasn't happened in other words i've had this cookbook for about two years and i keep looking at the pictures thinking i'm going to change my diet it hasn't happened i resolved in this year that i was gonna um do it more i don't know so it's it's by my bed because it's this thing like steph why don't you pick out a recipe and do it so i've cooked two recipes from this cookbook in about two years but i keep trying okay but it shows you sort of the diversity of how i'm reading i'm really enjoying this book uh by gabor mate of course he's a great writer and a thinker and philosopher and this is about adhd and this is one of the better books i've read about it because for example a lot of the books that i'm looking at on the subject matter are like this, which is more of a self-help book. I'm looking at self-help books because I'm writing a self-help book about how to write a divorce story. So I'm examining the genre in general. Um, and most of them are like this, which means that they're very thick. There's a lot of content. I, I don't think I can help myself because there's too much information in it. It's not necessarily, um, it's directional, but not necessarily helpful in terms of organizing myself. So in other words, I read a lot of self-help books like this, trying to figure out the genre of self-help books. And in the process of reading the type of self-help book, I get lost and overwhelmed. So I leave the self-help book feeling like I need help in terms of how I'm reading, which probably is what brought me to this, but anyway. Um, yeah, so in other words, Mate's book is really a book that you read for a deeper philosophical and literary experience, which is probably more my speed. This is supposed to be more like a to-do book and I'm not to-doing it, okay, whatever. This is not really a to-do guide, but I'm enjoying the read. 
I'm going to be interviewing Shonda Buchanan, and so I thought I have to reread some of her book, which is a superb memoir. I highly recommend this, called Black Indian. It's a lyrical book. Um, it crosses genres, and I loved it. And so this is why I'm going to be interviewing her. And usually when I'm interviewing somebody, I tend to read their book a couple times. I read it first for pleasure, and then I kind of look at different parts, and because we're going to have an interview soon, it's by my bed because I got to look at the different sections. This book is pretty interesting. Um, Lily Huang, A Beast Jerry. Um, it's a little bit more experimental. It's short, so it appeals to me. Um, I can get through a couple pages before I sleep. It's very poetic, so it's a pleasure book for me. Same with this, um, um, Naomi Shihab Nye, and this was this is Tiny Journalist. It's a a book of poetry. I just finished my poetry manuscript, Passing in the Middle Kingdom, and while it is completely done, I kind of like to look at different sort of poems that are a little bit uh, of the narrative bit, and this was recommended to me by Devi Laskar, and so I thought, hey, let me look at this book, and yeah, I can see why she recommended this book to me, and I'm enjoying it. You know, again, it's a couple of poems. Here's a poetry man magazine subscription. I don't subscribe to a lot of magazines. I initially subscribe to them, get very enthusiastic for about three months, cancel the subscription after a year, and then um, <clears throat> pick it up again later. And this is with every single magazine that's out there. So when people talk about, I'm a regular reader of the New Yorker, I'm a regular reader of the New York Review of Books. I have been on and off a reader of those kinds of publications, specifically those two over the years, but do I read every issue? No. Do I read them every year? No. I might read them fanatically for one year and the next year not read a single issue. So that's kind of my reading pattern. And um, But this is a subscription I get by the month right now. Will I get it forever? Maybe not, That's just, but that's just my literary diet. Finally, I was re recommended to read this by Nanama Dankwa, and um, I'm really enjoying this book. Um, just started Create Dangerously by Edward Stanicott, and um, yeah, I think it's kind of going to be helpful. So this is just a short... Um, this is not meant to promote necessarily any of this books. This is more of a video about showing how how one might read and to not judge yourself about how you're reading. The vast majority of people don't even read a single book after they graduate from college. So if you do read, you're in the minority of readers, okay? And readers tend to, um, there becomes this thing of like, I gotta read this, did you read this? You know, it's a hobby, it's a, it's a way of being. So people, um, they can get competitive about how much they're reading and how meaningful the books are that they're reading and are you reading this and you're out of the loop if you don't know this you know just give it up who cares reading is really about you it's a solo activity like four of you don't read from the same page at the same time you might discuss the book and thereby you invent community but reading is for you to commune with the writer across time across um, language geography different experiences and enter the brain of that person and exchange and create your own idea and image and dream in your mind for a few moments and seconds while we're here on this planet. So please make sure that reading is something you enjoy and you feel entertained by and don't discipline yourself for it. Just go to it for information, go to it for fun. And um, sometimes you finish a book, sometimes you don't. And that's the way you'll get through a lot of reading and writing in your life, okay? So please, if you enjoy this, uh, subscribe to my video, um, hit uh, my Substack newsletter at drstephaniehan.com. And I look forward to seeing you and I'll be sharing tips on reading, writing, wellness, and the like. Cheers.